Recording for Kiki Jikis today, actually courting for Kikis because the leagues are on. Curse you, Moto, and delaying us yesterday. So we've got the El Aldamre's calls in the main deck again. I liked these last time. Uh, I'm trying out an Obsidian Charmaw in the sideboard. I've split my extra removal with two Prismatic Endings and two Path to Exiles. I'm playing some Path still instead of all all Prismatic Endings because uh, Path to Exile is good against Stormwing Entity, which is a real card that you need to get rid of. I think just four Solitudes is not enough. We have a Meatball Kiki. This is the Meatball Kiki. I don't have good cords. I forgot to get good cords. We do, we do have a Meatball today. So let's dive on into some leagues with this one and see if it... If it can keep up its, uh, its consistent performance for us. <clears throat> hey, sweet. That's interesting that the... Was it like an app update or your internet update that allows the low, lower latency mode to work? No companion for the opponent. That sounds fine. See, chat, I told you we were going to get mileage out of that command today. A temple garden here. Hope this bird lives. Colony garden. So probably the deck that's flooping a bunch of stuff into play. Which means I want to seasoned pyromancer this turn because I want to try and find um Eidolon of Rhetoric to stop their Cascade Creatures. We're going to go ahead and grab... Um, we're going to grab a green source here because I want to be able to Court of Calling if we draw it. And I'm going to ditch uh, Skyclave Apparition and Endurance here. Because I want tokens in case we draw a uh, Court of Calling. Morning runtime. Thanks for the year and a half. Welcome back. Yep. So this is definitely the uh, the Cascade Warp World deck. Yeah, Colony Garden does not mean Titan. They're playing the the self Warp World card. So if I ephemerate this, I get to draw two, and then I can still Court of Calling for three. I'll have one, two, three, plus this, plus if I discard these two, I'd get two tokens. Although I probably want to keep the Kiki Jiki, I would venture to guess. So maybe we'll discard, we'll play this out, and we'll ditch this, this, and we'll fetch Sacred Foundry. So that means I can attack for, uh, if I'm going to get one more token, I can attack with one token, and then we'll blink this, and then we'll have one, two, three tokens, plus one, two, three to cord four. So I just, I just want to be able to cord for idle on. Knacker, thanks for the 26 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. My opponent evoked an elemental that investigates twice when it comes into play. So my opponent is no longer clueless. None of those are the court of calling I wanted for Christmas, unfortunately. 
We just play the Birds of Paradise to have maximum mana next turn. If they have one of their eight Cascade spells here, we could die this turn. Yep. So they cast Glimpse of Tomorrow, which flips their board into a new board. And their hits actually weren't that amazing here, but they did get Goblin Dark Dwellers. Oh, they got mana from this too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and auto pass. So they can Cascade again out of hand here. This is, this is what their deck is looking to do. It just Cascades a bunch. And it keeps flipping their board into play, generating more and more cards. Well, they, they were pretty unfortunate here that they didn't... Oh, it also just keeps Omnathing me, huh? As they flip through things. And they draw cards as Omnath comes into play. And then Season Pyromancer lets them churn, so any other Cascade card here lets them go again. Very likely dead here on their turn three. So, this is their third glimpse of the turn. This deck is probably miserable to resolve in paper, huh? Okay. Whenever a land enters battlefield under you, you get a food or a treasure token. So if they have another Cascade card in hand here, they're going to have a lot of permanence. I mean, they eventually end up killing us, so... Like, this is this is what they were looking for. Opponent, so someone in chat commented that the opponent was getting a little bit lucky. They're actually kind of unlucky that they hadn't found a card like this to make a bunch of permanence yet. So now, now they make a bunch of permanence. So now, when they do the thing... They flip a significant portion of their deck. So yeah, so the person that was saying they were they were getting lucky, they're actually kind of unlucky. And now at this point, Fury's gonna get to start killing my board. And they're going to get to Glimpse again. I think their end game is... Teamer Omnath, maybe? I don't actually know. And I, I want to find out too, right? Like, we have to sit here and wait for our opponent to work the Moto interface. I said this is going to be unwieldy in paper. Well, no, so... Does this... And it's Battlefield, you control, gay life. This is the first time this ability... Oh, this is going to kill us, right? Is Omnath going to be lethal? Is that how is that how that works? Is that is that just their end game? Is Omnath us? Okay. So not really a whole lot we could do there. We I'm happy with all of the plays that I made. They just uh, did not find us. We gave, I gave myself all the chances I could give myself to hit Court of Calling, and we did not get there. So, Tefri, Time Raveler, stops Cascade. Sanctum, Prelate, stops them from casting zero mana spells. Uh, Collector Oath turns off their artifact things when they're playing a fair game. Magus of the Moon doesn't seem very good. Endurance doesn't seem very good. Solitude's probably not very useful. Maybe I want some for like their fair game of magic.
Magus makes their combo uncastable. Now they have things that make treasure tokens. They have basic lands too, Silly Cheese. And one of their Cascade spells is red green, so they only need a basic forest for that one. I got you, Runtime. I don't think any of these other cards do much. When red or black cards... Oh, this is actually good, right? This means the... When they warp world, it gets exiled, so they can't flash it back. Actually fine. No, there's actually a second Omnath, you just don't see it on screen. It's a hidden, hidden seek, double secret special Omnath. I keep this. It's got a lot of mana and it's got Pyromancer. I can't always tell when you're joking about stuff like that or if it's a moto bug not showing it. <laughs> yeah, there's only one I'm at today. But things like Charming Prince and other stuff, and we have Eternal Witness to bring it back. I'm trying, trying just one. Slots, slots are tight, even with, even with 80 cards. A lot of, lot of good cards you want to play these days. Oh, you know what? I cut Solitudes, and I left Skyclave Apparitions in my deck. Solitude's probably better than Skyclave Apparition. Forgot about that one hiding out. So next turn, we can Utopia Sprawl and Season Pyromancer. Speak of the Devil and it will appear. I think I have naming right here. I'm gonna go ahead and bounce their token here. Draw a card. And then remember, Tefri Raveler of Fun here says they can't cascade. Well, they can cascade, they just can't cast the spell that they get with it. What a verse or modern next at the moment. I don't like answering questions that should be answered objectively with subjective anecdotes. So I will tell you that I've enjoyed playing modern. But we also haven't really had large modern tournaments enough consistently to really say competitively how diverse the format is. I will say that modern's a format that on average tends to be pretty diverse even when the format's narrow, like even during Eldrazi Winter, people played a lot of different things. Oh, this hits Planeswalkers. Huh. Okay, so I made, I made a mistake. I should have sent this up to play around. Oh wait, what, really? Oh. Uh, deal. I want a basic land tier so I don't hurt myself.
With magic adding these once per turn restrictions. I don't understand what you're referring to when you say once per turn restrictions. Can you explain? What's uh you mean like Eidolon? Cards like Eidolon? Because cards cards like these have existed for a really long time. They're not really not really a new thing. <laughs> you know, someone else mentioned that this morning, Beetle, but it's still funny every single time it gets brought up. That's hilarious. I missed I missed that. I did not catch that myself, but it's still really funny. A lot of new cards have restrictions that this ability only triggers once per turn. Oh. Uh, no, there's always been a mix of things that, that do stuff like that. Thanks for the 15 months, Zap. Welcome back. Grab this so we can cast a meatball if we draw it. So I've got four, five, six, seven mana. So in theory, we could kill them this turn, right? We draw a quarter calling here. Oh no, I have an idol on in play. I don't know, bro. Guard symmetrical. It's fine. Well, this card, this card's from a long time ago, so it's an old card. If this card was printed in 20, 2020 or 2019, it wouldn't be symmetrical. Man, we're really bad at drawing our tutors this set, huh? Oh, I guess Omnath deals damage to my Tefri here. Oh, I have a noodle. Chat, you need to yell at me when I don't have noodle up. Listen, out of sight, out of mind. This no this noodle didn't exist until someone in chat just mentioned it. <laughs> someone said, don't forget at the very beginning of the set, but chat, it hides it. It hides it every game. Moto is out to get me. It hides it every game. Listen, if I don't acknowledge it and pull it up, chat, I didn't see your message. Yeah, I'd like to. I would like to adjust the difficulty settings, please. Are they attacking with this violent outburst? Am I about to be attacked by their board? Is that what's happening here? This is so violent, yet. Opponent, calm yourself.
All right, so I shouldn't attack with Restoration Angel. I've got it. Because they're gaining plenty of life anyways. I need Tefri to not take a hit here because um, they can crack a fetch with Omnath and deal four to him. All right, so do I want to play and blink things with Yori in this turn and draw a bunch of cards, or do I want to Sanctum, Prelate, or do I want to Sanctum, Prelate, and... lock them out some more? Yeah, I think, I think I'm supposed to just put the third hoser into play to make sure I don't die. By mistake. I can't cast another spell this turn, right? I need that. Yeah, opponent's gonna make some one ones. So I actually want to blink the Eidolon out so that way I can cast a Utopia Sprawl because they can't cast spells on my turn anyways, right? So... I like oatmeal. Instant oatmeal is in my breakfast rotation. Actually, I don't even want to cast this, right? Because I'd rather have a 1-1 one -one elemental token. Yeah, I'd rather have a 1-1 one -one elemental token, I think. All right, and now for the hard game, right? The one where... The one where they could just, like, go off turn three on the play. Well, this game's easier if I remember my companion, assuming that... Assuming that I can survive to get to that point. So I think I need to mulligan this, because I, I ideally want a hate piece in my opener, I think. Ideally, I want, like, hate piece plus ramp spell. And then I think we have to just like sigh and keep this on on five, right? And just like, nah, I'm gonna go to four. Okay. I assume I assume we're just dead here. Their average draw just like goes off on three and kills us. Halfway there, oh, oh, lizard on a chair, take my hands, we'll make it, I swear. My body, my body is ready for them to go. My body is ready for them to go uh, play your free thing that kills both my creatures and then combo me, but you know, this is what it is. I play Kiki Court almost every week, Swift.
Come on, untap green. Nailed it. What's the opponent's combo? They cast uh, Glimpse Tomorrow a bunch of times, and then um, they cast Glimpse Tomorrow a bunch of times, and then kill you with Omnath coming into play. So I'd like to draw another hate piece here. Uh, I think that qualifies actually. Not a hate piece, but it's a card I'll play rather than Season Pyromancer. Definitely want to take Omnath, Omnath here off the table. Yeah, it's a 4-4 four -four with Menace. It's a 4-4 four -four with Menace. Very, very scary, chat. Very menacing. So I can cord for 4 here? Our Court of Calling deck your Court of Calling. Fancy. Fancy. Our opponent is no longer clueless. They're going to try and win a fair game here. Yeah, the opponent's deck is very different than the deck we played a few weeks ago for people that haven't been keeping up on the format. The opponent's deck is a uh, not all in on the glimpses and their cards generate more card advantage or more permanence as they go and they do it multiple times in a turn to build up a board. So when in doubt, cast your cord for Eternal Witness and pick cord back up out of your graveyard. Yeah, the full set was spoiled yesterday. It releases on Magic Arena today. Or the full set was spoiled Tuesday, actually. There's a full set review on my YouTube channel. Should we tutor for Eidolon? No, I'm going to tutor for Eternal Witness to pick back up Court of Calling here. Because ideally, I want to set up a combo kill here. So, next turn, we cord for Restoration Angel, Blink Eternal Witness, pick Cord back up, and then... Uh, the following turn, we'll cord for Kiki Jiki and combo kill them. And while we do all of this, we're holding up cord for Eidolon or cord for Resto to blink the Sanctum Prelate. So we're both setting up our own combo here and insulating against our opponent being able to combo kill us. Yeah, that's that's the plan. That's what the stream title would say. That's what my schedule is. Always remember, you can find my schedule on my website as well as on my uh, on my Twitter. And not only it includes not only what I plan to be live with when, but also when I'm live in general. You played Blue White Delver? I'm not a I wasn't aware that Blue White Delver was a deck. Penumbra, thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate the support. Welcome back. Blue Red Delver. Ah, uh, no, we have not. The, you mean the Delverless Delver deck? 
I assume. Ben, thanks for 11 months. A lot of people have been calling the Delverless Delver deck with Dragon Rage Chandler and Murktide Delver still. As a point of reference for people. Okay, so their dead deck's turn, assuming they don't have some kind of instant speed piece of interaction. I don't believe their deck plays Solitude. So again, this kind of shows off the how Chord... This is why Chord of Calling is a one-card combo in this deck. So last turn, we corded for Eternal Witness. This turn, we cord for Restoration Angel. And we blink the Eternal Witness, which gets back Court of Calling, which then lets us cord for Kiki Jiki next turn. And then for those that aren't familiar with this deck, you're newer to Magic or haven't seen this before, Kiki Jiki plus Restoration Angel makes an unlimited number of 3-4 flyers with haste. You put the kiki in the resto and you drink it all up. And that was a that was a mulligan to four game, right? And it really it really shows like um it's not about how many cards you start with in modern especially, but it's which cards you start with, right? Like I knew I needed an accelerant and a hate card, and we mulliganed to get to those. So we gave ourselves the best possible chance to find what we were looking for, and we did, and we won. Someone asked what shirt I'm wearing. This is one of my, our many wonderful Coal Essence apparel shirts. It says they're uh, Run the Jewels with, uh, with the mocks on it, which is lovely. If you want a fantastic way to support my content and pick up some sweet clothing yourself, check out check out Coal Essence apparel and use code Hoglandia to save 10% on your order there. Yeah, it's really, really, they have a whole whole range of great stuff. Which is honestly one of the best parts about the sponsorship with them is they send me a bunch of their new designs so I get to wear them on stream. Catch you later, Juicy. Yeah, remember you can always catch up catch up after the fact on YouTube. I appreciate the 11 months. You think the new Black Land would be a good fit in Mono Black Egger? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the number one card from, and we're going to do some historic with the, so today and tomorrow we're going to be focusing on standard 22 since the open this weekend is standard 22, but we're going to dip back into some historic next week. And basically what we're going to be doing in historic is just like shoving the new creature lands into a bunch of different decks because the new, the new creature lands are really good. So 13 months, we'll move it. We'll come back. Can I keep this? Are the creature lands rare? I have no idea. <laughs> Caring about the rarity of magic cards? Is this some kind of peasant joke I'm too much of a whale to understand? I have not, I don't have any Hoglandia specific stuff up on, up on Colossus, no. Look at that meatball chant. It's like, put me in coach, I'm castable in this deck, I swear. Well, to be fair, Runtime, I asked the other mods not to bully, 
Not to bully mods without shields, so... Uh, I actually have some Jester branded shirts, one of which has message delete on the back of it, up on Streamlabs. This link work? I think this link works. The shirt's up there. No, that, that link doesn't work anymore. I think I have those. I have to look. Like, I'll take a peek at it later. Some kind of kiki shirt with a meatball reference could be good, though. I agree with that. Godless Shrine, Polluted Delta. Esper Control. What are we, what are we casting here? The top five cards your library, put any number in the graveyard, put the rest back in the order. So this would imply a combo deck of some sort, I imagine. All right, so the Solitude's probably about to be pretty good, huh? Do this to train in our land drop. Yeah, about about an hour and a half, hour 45. The patch starts at 10 a.m. Central, which is an hour 15 from now, but it usually takes half hour to 45 minutes for it to be downloadable for everyone and playable. Sometimes, sometimes it's available right at 10. So we're going to play this league. This is only match two. I plan to play, play this league out and then, uh, then we'll switch over. So opponent with the improper sequencing here, gonna get punished. They definitely should have played Viscera Seer first. Oh, you know what? Am I supposed to keep that? Yeah, I think I messed up here now too. I sh Maybe I should have been the Restoration Angel even though it's the combo piece because being able to exile this is probably valuable. Green source. Green source. I think I want to blink this to try and hit the land. Feels bad, man. Hopefully they just flop around a little bit now that we interacted with them. We will we will get to draw again next turn when this rebounds on here. So we'll get two draws next turn at a third land. Wild growth isn't modern legal, right? I'm pretty, pretty sure it's not. Otherwise, our Brawl decks would have played that in the past. <laughs> Death Free Time Reveler means that my rebound doesn't happen. Gross. We at least have this to draw a card, so we still get two draws at a land next turn.
We can find some mana. We can get our combo set up, hopefully, before they reassemble whatever it is they're doing over there. I don't know exactly how the opponent's deck kills, but usually when you sacrifice Protean Hulk, it tutors up a mix of things that end in lethal. Come on, Tefri. Classic, I've used 90 seconds off my clock and my opponent's used five and a half minutes. Yeah, it's probably greedy. I'm probably supposed to have just done this. I don't know. I guess if I would have played this out last turn, they would have uh, Tef rebounced it. I'd just be like right back where we started. People, people often ask me, like, how I'm able to play so quickly. And on Moto, it's not even just about making decisions quickly. If you notice, my mouse almost never goes over here to click buttons. I have, there's hotkeys on the keyboard for pressing OK and pressing yes and no. And if you just, like, use the hotkeys, you're much quicker at the interface. And doing things like auto-passing in situations like this where they have Tefri and there's no point in bluffing. Yeah, that's, that's also true, too. Like, I can think through, like, what my decisions are going to be next turn while my opponent sits here and takes forever to take their turn. So, like, on my turn when I draw a card, the only decision I have to make is do I reassess the play that I concluded I wanted to make on their turn based on the new card that I drew? Well, they didn't get another Hulk in their bin, which should be very good for us. And they just cash in their Tefri for a card here, which means Utopia Sprawl could come down next turn and not get injured. Would really love an untapped Red Source so we could see some Pyromancer, though. Okay, we'll put this down on red. And we'll continue passing and playing the Magic the Gathering game. We've had uh, three lands in 16 cards this game after keeping a two-lander. And te technically one of those cards was a fetch land, so like... Kind of like two lands and 15 cards. Yeah, for whatever reason, a lot of people that play Magic slowly seem to gravitate towards playing decks that uh, win the game slowly. And really, it needs to be the inverse, right? Like, if you're someone that plays slowly, you need to win the game. You need to win the game quickly so you can have time to win. All right, and I assume we're dead here at this point, so let's find out how. I believe, I believe it's some type of Revelark body double shenanigans. We'll make our opponent uh, execute at least once here, so that way we can see what the loop looks like, so we can make uh, good sideboarding decisions. So opponent gets Cauldron Familiar and Body Double. Body Double copies Protean Hulk. They sacrifice the body double. <sighs> they get a protein hulk trigger here again. Yeah, I mean, our opponent's also taken forever. So like, there's probably, honestly, if I want to min-max my, my league value, we probably make them actually kill us because they're just taking fucking forever. So now they sack Lark... And they bring back Body Double, Copy Lark, and Cauldron Familiar. And then they sack Cauldron Familiar, sack Body Double, loop the Cauldron Familiar here. So this is their, their win condition, is they just sit here and loop now. 
right? So they sack, sack this, and then they sack this, and it brings back itself plus the culture's familiar. This is actually a matchup where the fact that I've cut scavenging ooze from my 75 is a little detrimental. So for sideboarding here, uh, Sanctifier and Vec is good. Honestly, I probably bring in Sanctum Prelate and put it on two because it tags their schemings, it tags the unmarked graves, it tags persist. Prismatic ending deals with uh, this one drop here as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and concede here, rather than making my opponent sit here and click through click through things. I could I could definitely win this game based on clock. If I if I wanted to, oh Oriok champion technically disrupts their combo too, right? If they're draining us for one every time something comes into play, so I'll bring in that one as well. And then Linvala also stops them from sacrificing things. We've got we've got a lot of good good ways to interact with the opponent here post board. Wazali Pride Mage out, Collector of out, Omnath out, Solitude is good. Idolana Rhetoric out. Man, what do we what do we even want to trim? Magus of the Moon sounds kind of appealing. I guess Magus trying to punk them with Magus is probably not good. We'll trip that. Hey, what's going on, Panda? Thanks for the entire year's support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Newcomb, thanks for the quarter of a year. All right, so I need three more cuts. Charming Prince could go... This is probably too cute. A lot of our other hate cards are better here. Shouldn't like a wall of blossoms because it doesn't block. The blocking's not relevant in this matchup. I want to leave Skyclave Apparitions in because they tag their Sacrifice Outlet and they also take Tefri off the table so my opponent can't lock me out of interacting with them like they did that game. Yeah, wall wall of reach just isn't isn't good in this archetype anymore. Hasn't been for a while, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh ramp dork, solitude, white card, ephemerate. Bottom uh bottom of land tier. Thank you for the companion reminder. He's a good noodle when we remember he's there. I will say, based on the fact that my opponent's taking forever just to take simple game actions, is making me regret not making them click through their combo in the first game a little bit. Because, like, it's not even like they're, like, making hard decisions here. They're just wasting our time because they're likely doing something else while they're playing this match of magic. Incendia, thanks for the two-thirds of the year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. No, Solitude is a hate card in this matchup. Thanks for the sub-gift, Eminem. 
Their, their combo resolve relies on being able to sacrifice Protean Hulk, so being able to exile Protean Hulk is interaction. Assume we're going to lose the rest restoration angel here. Huh. Yeah, I should have the Magus the Moon in my deck. I like four colors. Well, that unfortunately does not have a green card to go with it. So we could die next turn. It is, it is the correct waiting room hug. Good morning. So we are dead to uh, footsteps of the Gorio here. Fun time, fun time. Not really, not really a whole lot we could do there. Just didn't get to play magic in the first game. Kept a two lander, died on turn eight with two lands in play. And then got thought seized out of our piece of interaction there. Andre, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. At least it's nice on Moto that like that happens. And uh, to to give perspective on how bright a younger, dumber Jeff was, Jeff used to fly across the country to experience games of magic like that. Now we just get to experience them from my basement and move on to the next one right away. And have only spent $10 to gamble on the league instead of, you know, $500 on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, to actually get paid while doing it instead of spending a bunch of money. It always, it always makes me chuckle when, like, really, really elitist magic pros would act like it's the pinnacle of, like, magic's like this pinnacle of, like, an intellectual game. It's just like, there's so many, so many matches like that, right? Where you just, like, stumble and die, and then you get modern out of the second game, and it's just like, it's just like how a lot of it works. Wait a half hour for the next round? Man, if you only waited a half hour for the next round to start after losing in 10 minutes, that would be so fast. Rounds were usually much longer than that. But rolling dice, rude magic. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Scale of one to dead, where's this bird at? Still very much alive for the turn. Definitely just gonna get rid of this Chandler here. Getting getting our hand empty of spells also has value because they're likely a thought seize deck with the Blood Crypt fetch. So we no longer have thoughts left to seize. This is uh, where the magic happens. Shadow means it can't block or be blocked, so might as well attack. Yeah, we did a full set review on Tuesday. You can find that up on the YouTube channel. If they don't have a Fatal Push, Bolt, Unholy, whatever, and we get to blink the Skyclave Apparition, we're in a pretty good spot here. Geovan, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this morning. 
We'll fetch up our Just Guy Trium here. Risky click chat, we didn't zoom in. One noodle, please. And they unfortunately have a piece of removal here. Might as well untap the bird. Dothry Voidwalker is a little bit of a nonbo with Tarmogoyf, huh? Just like another reason this card should probably be taken out to pasture. Eldomri's Call. The machine thinks for the entire year. Welcome back. So Yeah, we could pyro and churn through some cards. I could also like they only have two cards in hand. There could be value in just like grab another Skyclave apparition, take the Voidwalker out of play. Could also just like grab Omnath and can trip him and get going that way. I feel like I feel like there's value in taking this off the table though. Having having this in play also makes any ephemerates I could draw much better. I'm also only at 11, so like this is a pretty real clock with Shadow. Our opponent's a Luris deck. Is this Fatal Push? Why are we attacking with the 1-1? One, one? They could just cycle this for Fatal Push. Maybe they don't want to give up green. They have Teamer Battle Rage. Culligan's Command. Wait, are they making themselves discard a card? To guarantee the Goyf gets bigger? That's cute. So they have six cards in bins. They can escape Crocs the next turn. Yeah, I'm aware. I explained the line. They didn't, if they didn't make themselves discard, the Goyf wouldn't have traded with my Yorian. So, because they're not escaping, because they're not escaping Croxa this turn, I'm going to exile the Dragon's Rage Chandler here. So that way, when we ephemerate this again next turn, we give them back a 1-1 one -one instead of a 2-2. Two -two. Fetch a red source here. I mean, I should hold that fetch line, actually, in case we draw Omnath. That's probably correct. I need to get rid of the Void Walker now, right? Okay, there's a Restoration Angel. I 
So just like that, all of our Kikis and our tutors are live. And they don't have a fourth land anymore, so they can't escape Croxa. So if they attack with everything here, we Resto, Blink the Skyclave, eat the Tarmogoyf, and then eat both their tokens. Hey, Urkadar, thank you for the 47 months. That's quite, quite the duration. Appreciate the support. Welcome back. Two calls, four chords, and a Kiki Jiki walk into a bar and make infinite restoration angels. So they'll play, they'll play Luris, will Resto, Blink the Skyclave, Exile Luris, attack for six, attack for six. Correct. Yorian is the only card in the graveyard because they've had uh, Dothries in play for a lot of the game. And they know this Restoration Angel is in my hand. Which is why they're in the tank here, because they bobbled us last turn. They're trying to figure out what do they do to play around this Restoration Angel. Me, me too, Lucas. Me too. Skyclave is so good in this deck. So I have to stay above three here because otherwise the Acroxa escape kills us. Please concede. Oh, it has flying. Brutal. All right, need a live one. Damn. Really, really close game considering how much we flooded out here. How many spells do we have this game? We had one, two, three, four, five. We had six spells in 18 cards. Like. See, this is why Magic Arena doesn't have a draw card button at the end of the game, because the draw card button doesn't actually work. Wizards isn't capable of programming that to be functional. Trade Mage out, Collector out, Eidolon out, Magus of the Moon out. We were dead if the opponent attacked all and Croc said, right? Nope, I was at seven and attack all would have put me to four. Croc would have put me to one and I would have killed them on the backswing. Opponent's play was very good. Probably not a matchup I need Charming Prince in. Yeah, one of one of the tokens is only a one one. Is the part you might be missing? Walls block pretty okay here, so I think I definitely want to keep all of those. This resets Croxa and their Delirium.
Eternal Witness is kind of medium if they're on four Daw three. Stop it. Don't take don't take my Eternal Witnesses away. Eternal Witness is a sacred cow. It's one slot. Never cut it. And they're not always going to have a Daw three in play. And I'm boarding in additional removal spells to make Daw three even worse. Guess my mana is pretty awkward here, huh? Because I kind of want Sacred Foundry to have double red. I, gu I guess I'm just getting Temple Garden, so I have double white guaranteed for turn two. We'll put this on red. I guess I don't have any double red cards yet. This is probably fine. Yeah, definitely, Lur. Yeah, I don't, I don't have... Uh, Deck Q, Deck Q is pretty, pretty clear at the moment. It might, might even get played today, in fact. Depending on, depending on what it is. You have something built already. If I have to build it, it'll get played tomorrow. I'll build it tonight and we'll play it tomorrow, but... If you have something already together, we can definitely squeeze it into today, even. If you'd prefer tomorrow, we could definitely do tomorrow, too, but... Huh. Took the cord as opposed to the Skyclaves. Interesting. Especially after the business Skyclave gave them in game one. Maybe they have another discard spell. There's that small amount of awkwardness I was talking about with the mana to start here. That's fine. We usually don't want to play this out until our hand's closer to empty anyways, so... Can chill for a bit while we wait for another red source. Land pass here. This up. I tapped three white lands, but none of them made white by default. Oh, oh, Moto. Oh, Moto. I would say never change, but please, please change. Hey, what's going on, Cheese? Good morning. The untapped land here, too. Yep. Be good. With the Horizon Canopy already in play, I'd rather fetch a, uh, a red source here than play another Canopy land out. I'm going to keep the Skyclave Apparition here. Definitely looking like a game where we can just grind them out fairly here. Rocket Banana. Thanks for the 20, thanks for the 26 months. Welcome back. It sounds good, Lur. Black Red Dragon sounds sweet. Big, big fan of dragons. Gotta send you some Bezos bucks before he goes to outer space. Yep. Appreciate it. 
We have all of our colors at this point, except for blue. This turns into a blue and a pinch. Kiki Corden Historic. I don't know about that. I think Restoration Angel would be a sweet addition to Historic, but I don't know that Kiki Jiki necessarily adds value to the format. It's like Kiki Jiki's a card that just like incidentally combos with a bunch of things. I don't know that that's strictly healthy to add to the format. Yeah, Pyromancer escapes itself from the graveyard to make a bunch of tokens too at some point, which is great. Are there any enablers in Historic for Kiki at the moment? I believe so, but I also don't know offhand. I'm cycling this horizon canopy here. Okay, Eldomini's call. Forget Freeman, thanks for the 27 months, welcome back. Oh yeah, Cat, Cat's an enabler. No, Cat, Cat doesn't exist, right? Felder Guardian's banned, Sahili is legal. No, Cat, Cat's not legal. All right, what is this call getting? Is it just getting Skyclave Apparition again? Corridor Monitor, there we go. I think it's just Skyclave Apparition again. We want to get rid of the Dothry Voidwalker so they can't use it to uh, cast Season Pyromancer to draw two. I think is the, the play. Oh wait, I have enough mana to get Plow actually, right? Five? Yeah, okay, sweet. So we'll get Solitude, actually. Same thing, except uh, it has Life Flank and it blinks better. Friend. Then I have eight mana next turn, so I can uh, draw Yorian, play Yorian. Blink the board, win the game. Their top cards a break here, the game is over. If they have a way to kill Solitude, they might be okay. But we should still be pretty far ahead. So we're going to draw a couple cards and reset their graveyard even if they get rid of Solitude. All of the old 4-5 the old noodle. Opponent is auto passing, so the game should be over here. We get a game three with them on the play. Come on. Maybe not auto passing. Do you have a response? Oh, all the Vanifier untappers work. Yeah, that's a good call. Right, we had a few of those. Can you provide your thoughts on the five color elementals deck in modern? I don't understand why that deck would be playable. Looks like a bunch of slow, clunky bad cards. If you play if you play against a bunch of stuff like what this current opponent is playing. It's probably fine, but like if you play against like the miscellaneous combo decks that exist in this format, I don't understand how you get anything other than just completely trashed. Naruto, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. No, chat, I boarded out. I boarded out Charming Prince. No. I can cord for three here. Doesn't do anything for me. Sedge. That's fine. That's fine. I think I'm out of basics too, right?
Now, I don't want to Ewit get back cord because it requires me to tap all of my creatures, and I kind of want a wall to block this Tarmogoyf. I'm only, I'm only at eight. And like, we have, we have plenty, plenty of mana, so. Oh yeah, we can totes just do that too. So we'll cord for three. Can I get a witness? Witness will pick up Sky Noodle. Remember the person I timed out for suggesting I cut my eternal witness in this matchup? I hope I hope you now understand the folly of your ways. <laughs> don't don't cut the eternal witness. It's so good. Yeah, so I was like, let's board out eternal witness. I was like, no, you never cut the eternal witness. It's great. It's more than good. It's great. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we want Charming Prince. I'm pretty sure cutting that is correct. I like the rest of what we did here. I'll turn it back. I appreciate, I genuinely appreciate the companion reminders at the start of the game because I like click on it here and then I forgot to pop it up and then I forget it exists, so. You're doing, you're doing the Lord's work. Yeah, sounds fine. They take my Utopia Sprawl, I still have a wall on two, they don't take my Utopia Sprawl, I have a choice of three drops on two. Would kind of like a second land that's not a Sunbake Canyon as my second land of the game, but beggars won't be choosers. These are a few of my favorite things. Do 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 do. So got to fetch shock so we can get a forest with this arid mesa. He said before drawing temple garden. Turn two, three, three flyer, casual, no big deal. That's their second land drop at least. We've got that going for us. So I'm supposed to fetch shock and then season pyromancer discard cord plus wall here, right? To try and find a green source to cord for a removal spell for this, I think. Or green source. Yeah, I think that's the play. I guess I could ditch the Sunbake Canyon instead of the other Quarter Calling. The one one's not that useful. Yeah, let's keep the cords in case they have a discard spell. Because even, because I have the, the ramp, so when I draw the green land here, I can still cord for three, which is nice. Nice. 
I think I'm supposed to upkeep. Do this cord. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna just guy cleave this gin this gin layer. Huh. You know what I could have done? Maybe I was supposed to wait for it to attack and then grab endurance. Well, I guess that's worse against a removal spell, huh? That definitely could have been the better line. What's going on, mana symbol? Good morning. I don't know. There's there's value in having having this in play, right? Wow, and they just killed that? Holy crap. So now I get to go ahead and fetch mountain cast kiki jiki kiki jiki skyclave apparition. So chat, for people that are upset that we can cast Kiki Jiki in, in this deck list, you've probably often heard the saying, as you get older, you become more conservative. And when people say that, they're not actually referring to you developing shitty political standpoints. What they actually mean is it means you put enough red lands in your Kiki Jiki deck to actually cast Kiki Jiki should you draw it. Am I supposed to YOLO, YOLO the combo here? I think I'm supposed to pass. I'm gonna pass. I think, I think we're ahead and I'm just supposed to pass. Because they, they explicitly did not draw Luris, right? Because I can, um, I can cord for Eternal Witness, and then Kiki Eternal Witness at end of turn here. One of your finest meatballs, please. I think I think we just pass again here, right? There's no reason to give them an opportunity to spend mana on the, on my end of turn here. They have fatal push. They get we get got by this, but I don't think they have room to play fatal push in their deck for the most part these days. Oh, I could have tapped differently and had court of calling held up here, huh? If I would have cast Kiki off of this, I would have been able to cord for two here. Fun tip while making Kiki tokens in a fair manner. If you make a Kiki token during your end of turn, the Kiki token stays into play through their whole turn. That's why it has value in making, making this during their end step.
Uh, sure. They're dead? They were they were dead before we drew the resto because we had cord, but you know. Saves us saves us a library search. Good stuff, good stuff. Some sweet grindy gameplay there. One combo kill, one fair deck kill. This this iteration of Kiki with the solitudes and the skyclaves is so much better against Jun, Jun style decks than it used to be. I'd like the record to reflect I remembered my companion on my own this game chat. You can teach a dumb dog new tricks. I'm so smart. I remember my companion exists chat. Appreciate me. Witness me. My opponent has mulligan to four, so they're either about to play a Tron land or they're incredibly unlucky. Uh, this deck's about $1,500 in paper, last I checked. It might be down a little bit. I think Solitudes came down from the initial Modern Horizons release, but 1K, 1K plus for sure. Opponent mulliganed to four altogether, sure. Eighty cards hurts the wallet. Yep. See, I want, I want to, I want to play some paper modern when tournaments come back, but I also don't really feel like spending a mortgage payment on a deck that I'll only play, you know, four times a year. So, you know, choices. How much that is lands, though? A big chunk of it's probably the mana base. I mean, it would be a business expense, but, like, business expense doesn't mean something is free. It means it's, like, a 25% discount. Yeah, this mana base does have a lot of fetches in it. That's accurate. Peace was never an option, chat. Depending on how familiar with Modern is and how familiar with my name is, they, they put it as it should be clear what we're playing by now, so I wonder if they're going to end up conceding before they show us how to sideboard. Do Bogles usually play basic planes? No. I don't think so. Why does it brainstorm have storm? Asking the real philosophical questions. That would be great, Johan. I might hit, hit you up on that at some point. And sweet, once we get some, some boomer events back in paper. Uh, and honestly, I've talked about this before, but the graphics of Moto don't bother me. The two biggest things 
that Moto could make better without needing a complete overhaul is Moto needs an auto tapper and it needs a clock like Magic Arena's clock. It needs a clock that has not only this timer that counts down a total number of minutes, but it needs a rope for individual actions. Because the fact that you can walk away from your computer for 7 minutes and 59 seconds during a match of Moto and not get penalized at all is atrocious. It makes it makes playing it it makes playing games like this so incredibly tedious because my opponent's obviously just not here, right? Like it's not like there's a decision to be made at the moment. Do you explain the role Pride Mage plays in Core Decks? Yeah, it's just a way to kill artifacts and enchantments. The important thing that Quasly Pride Mage that does different than things like Knight of Autumn or Skyclave Apparition is you can put it on the table proactively and hold up one mana to activate it, which is good against uh, Creature Lands. It's also a card you can cord slash call for that kills Torpor Orb on the off chance someone is playing that card. Pride Mage, Pride Mage slash Knight of Autumn specifically have value in this archetype over just Skyclave Apparition as well because they can kill Urza Saga in the current format because remember that land is an enchantment as well. So having your various disenchant effects that can tag that are good, Skyclave cannot get rid of Urza Saga because it's a non-land card. So I don't really have particularly strong feelings about Pride Mage main versus Knight of Autumn main, but I think you want one of the two main. I don't think I don't think it's awful if you don't have both main, but you want you want at least one or the other, depending on what you what you want. Like for example, if you're expecting to play against a lot of burn in whatever format you are playing, I would recommend main decking Knight of Autumn over this, because Knight of Autumn has extra utility against burn decks because it can gain life. Yeah, I have, oh, the fourth call you mean? I have, I have three calls. If you're talking about a fourth call, I could see a fourth call being good. All right, yeah, an opponent conceding before we get to know exactly what we're doing. So against basic planes, I'm going to cut Magus and Eidolon here. Collector Oath could be okay. They could definitely be like an Aether Vial deck. I'm going to bring in Knight of Autumn. I think I'm going to bring in Prismatic Endings. I did I don't have I only have three calls right now. There could there could be merit to having a fourth. I don't, I don't know that I want eight tutors though. They could be hammer time, yeah. And if they're hammer time, I want all these path to exiles too. Hammer time's a deck that does kind of mulligan aggressively, which kind of makes me want these paths, huh? I'm gonna I'm gonna board like their hammer time. We could we could get punished if there's some kind of weird combo deck, but a lot of the cards I want to board in against Hammer Time are just good generically against fair decks anyways, so. A lot of a lot of the cards I'm bringing in here are like good against uh most taxes decks these days are Yorian decks for blink value, so I, I think Hammer Time's probably a good estimation. No, I think I think that's a good that's a good read. Like thinking through, they could obviously be like a blue white control deck or something that that was unlucky too. But I like I like that I like that read. We obviously don't have a second land tier, but like birds plus sprawl in the draw, I think's a keep. 
Oh, they're squid. Oh, they are. They are just a, a trash. They are just a trash deck. Got it. Okay, so really want to draw a land here. Nailed it. So this is symmetrical. So I'm going to go ahead and path to exile this giver of runes. You get nothing. Good day, sir. Nicely own an arbiter. And then we're going to go ahead and Utopia Sprawl this. Oh, they're protecting this proactively. Hmm. Hmm. I wanted, I wanted the prismatic ending. Sedge. I'm going to Utopia Sprawl this. And I shocked here because if they Ghost Quarter or Field of Rune me, I want to be able to pay for this idiot. Or if they decide to get like cheeky and path my bird. Oh no, not Manor Reshaper. It's probably Eldrazi Displacer actually. So if I path the Arbiter, they got a land out of it, Johan. Because the Arbiter is no longer in play when the path resolves, or as the path is resolving. So I, I sequenced the way I did, so that way they wouldn't get a land with my path. I think I'm just passing here and holding up Resto slash Cord. I could be right to like prismatic ending the arbor arbiter and then fetch red draw Yorian too. Yeah, that's that's probably better actually. And the, Arb the Arbiter is good against our cords in hand too, right? Right, holding up cord isn't a thing we're doing. We'd only be holding up Resto. Yeah, getting, getting the Arbiter out of play is the line for sure. In my, in my head, Arbiter was only impacting my fetch lands, but yeah, it impacts the cords too. Good card to GTFO. Yikes. Yikes. All right, so probably dead. I no longer feel bad for our opponent. They deserve their mulligan last game. Their deck runs on pure variance, screwing people out of games. So, live by the shitty variance, die by the shitty variance. Their deck, their deck basically doesn't work if their opponent plays magic. Their deck is a bunch of mediocre, low power level cards. That just like, hope to function by the opponent not getting to actually play a game. I mean, I'm not salty. I'm just describing what their deck is. Like people, people are just like, Jeff, you're upset. I'm not upset. Their deck is, that's, that's an act. They're playing a two, two for two in modern. Their, their deck is low power level. That is an accurate depiction of their deck list. I get that you being a Texas player are biased and maybe want to think your deck is good. Or like has good. I'm for for the record. I'm not saying the deck strictly is bad. I'm saying the individual power level of the cards is low. Now that does mean the deck is bad, and we know it's bad because it doesn't put up consistent results. It's one of the 300 tier four or five decks in this format that people play. Like Kiki Cord, my Kiki Cord deck's not very good, but I play it anyways because I enjoy playing it. Why did they blink my wall of blossoms?
they could have killed me here, right? But instead they blinked my wall of blossoms. No, I mean, I was dead. I was dead even if they didn't do that, right? They needed to just fire this up and attack me. What is, what is this attack? Are they dead next turn? Pretty close to it, right? Oh, I guess I can't make mana with this anymore, huh? Okay. So you're putting on death and taxes in Legacy. Legacy is an incredibly different format that one, the taxes decks get tools like Wasteland and Rishadan Port, but also the context of the format is important there. So I don't want to path to exile proactively because it gives my opponent extra mana and every mana gives them more blinks with Displacer and I have to block every creature they have in play next turn. I haven't actually counted. We might be dead on board through this path to exile, but it's also not my job to figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and let them do the counting and maybe, maybe they mess up again because like we were dead last turn if they would have just attacked with everything, but instead they decided to start blinking stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Turnpike Bear. Like, there's nothing wrong with enjoying a deck that's underpowered, but, like, the opponent's archetype is a, a collection of underpowered cards that looks to get people with its underpowered cards. And that's fine. Just, like, call a spade a spade. Wolfwood, thanks for the third of the year. Welcome back. Yeah, none of, none of their blinks here kill us, right? Because I have Path to Exile? Oh wait, is that true? No wait, do their blinks kill us? I don't know, I haven't figured it out. If they blink a not, no right, no we're fine, right? Because we block then path. And if they blink bird, we tap it to path. Yeah, we're fine. And I get to line up blocks here and kill some stuff now. Call a spade a spade is simply jargon for call it like it is, basically. Like, let's let's just be honest with ourselves about what this is. How do I want to block here? It's, pr it's probably like this, right? And then I try to path the Thought Not Seer so my bird lives. And then they're losing, so they're going to get to blink the Thought Not Seer and take a card out of my hand. But they're losing a Eldrazi Displacer in this exchange, and I'm keeping my bird. So we're going to have this, this, and this. These will trade, this will die, they'll have Displacer Thought Not Seer left. And remember, they get to take the best card out of my hand here, but this is also card neutral, right? Like it gave me a card back. It's another fetch land that I can't currently use, but it did technically give me a card back. What's the best draw in our deck here? Omnath, probably. Because it draws a card and it gains me some life so I can start turning my fetches on. So the path doesn't happen. These trade off. This dies. They have these two left. Can I fetch an Omnath? Uh, I can't because I'm at one, right? This Eternal Witness is dying. I'm only going to have one, two, three, four, five, six left over.
So I have I have Knight of Autumn and I also have uh Charming Prince. And we could we could go fetch up here. Which I think I think I like. So I think we I think we cord for two like this. We get Charming Prince, we gain three. We Ephemerate Restoration Angel, we blink Charming Prince, we gain three again. And then the Ephemerate's coming back next turn. And that lets us use our fetch lands here. It also means we're not just dead to a single attack anymore. Yeah, they're very they're very satisfying big brain decks to play. Like you know, and like I was said, like the description of the opponent's deck, right? Like our deck's not tiered; it doesn't put up a ton of results, but I still enjoy playing it because it makes me feel smart. It has lots of little small tiny lines that are intri intricate and interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and double block here, and if they want to blink either of my creatures, that creature blinks the other one. They have a path to exile here. I get into trouble. But other than Path to Exile, just on board, we're fine. And I'm pretty, pretty happy to trade Resto for Thought Nuts here on this board state, I think. And if they want to, like, blink Thought Nuts here now, that's fine, too. Fern Doe, I think I missed that one. Thanks for that fear, and I'm glad you're enjoying the mix. I've been enjoying doing a ton of different stuff, too. Modern, arena, variety stuff, a little bit of Rune Terror sprinkled in. It's all been, it's all been a good time. A lot, of, a lot of great games out there you get to experience. Okay, and that trades. We get to draw a card here. If they don't have another Thought Not Seer, we're in a very good spot. This is the part where they play the other Thought Not Seer. Hickahawk, thanks for the over three years. Welcome back. All right, I get to rebound this. Draw a card. Forgot, forgot about the ephemerate chip. This, thanks for the year and a half. Welcome back. I think I'm actually fetching a basic forest here and playing this other bird out as well. And then I think that Prince Charming at end step is gaining us three again. I am going to want to start prioritizing fetching up 
I am going to want to prioritize starting to fetch up um, some red sources here so we can cycle this Sunbake Canyon. Well, I guess I have two birds too, huh? That's fine. Yikes. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ha, 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 They blink your it again? Yeah, right? I mean, I'm supposed to jump block with a bird here. I might not get to jump block later if they tap them all. Omnath. Golly. Are we dead? Not quite yet, but almost. They draw land next turn, they can tap us off of three things. Okay, so blinking the Yorian implies that they think they're about to kill us. Because otherwise they get to blink the Charming Prince and gain life, so hopefully they're wrong and they can't kill us. Hey, Chalk, thanks for the, thanks for the third of year. Modern's been sweet. Modern, modern. So we're taking tomorrow off of Modern because of the new set release on uh, Magic or Magic Arena. But every, every day next week, we'll be starting with Modern for sure. Support, support for Modern was strong on the sub survey, so... I think given the opportunity, I jump block this turn now. I'm going to play Blue Red Merc Tide again soon, possibly. We actually actually had a lot of modern deck submissions, so. Yeah, I feel like the opponent made a miscalculation here. So like, they get to um, obviously save their displacer from, they get to save their displacer with the flickerous pier, but it forces their hand. No, so the, the, the displacer flicker wisp is self-protecting. So they displacer the flicker wisp to blink the displacer. But now I have like two walls and friends coming back here at end of turn. So Displacer comes back, and then these come back. I gain three again. No, so Charming Prince doesn't... Charming Prince doesn't return it until the beginning of the next end step, so...
So like the opponent can blink three things, but like we've gained enough life at this point that that shouldn't matter. All right, so the end of our turn, we can get into some real shenanigans here, huh? We can ephemerate something plus call for resto, resto something. So if they pull the trigger on trying to mess with our stuff, we can interact back. And they, they kind of have to, right? MACD, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. They're targeting their flicker with. So I'm going to uh, call for resto in response here. Oh, you know what? I messed this up, right? They needed to blink their thing, so I should have let the first one resolve and then ephemerated, right? Yes. Okay, that's that's fine though cuz we have Kiki, right? So next turn, next turn the ephemerates going to cast target the skyclave. I forgot to fetch for my red source to have to end the turn. That's fine, they're conceding. All right, sweet. Is the AFR update up? It is. It is awake. All right, so maybe we won't finish this league. Maybe, you know what? 2 1 is basically 3 2, good time to stop. You know what? I was originally planning to start right with AFR tomorrow. But maybe we'll just do. Oh, wait. I only have one more match. Why did I think we were only three matches in? Because the interface was lagging? Okay. Never mind. I'm going to play. I'm going to play the last one real quick. If we had two more, I was going to save them for tomorrow. But I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and play the last one. So we'll wait. We'll wait a quick second on getting the stuff. We're gonna play. We're gonna play a bunch of. We're gonna play a bunch of uh, arena today, regardless. So we're not doing Spider Man or any variety at the end. So let's let's finish this up. We could also just concede, but like I like Kiki Cord, and I wouldn't mind farming some Moto Bucks if possible. I mean, I'm downloading the AFR update right now. Yes, if the matchup is something I don't like, we'll concede. I don't know. I don't know that there's any matchups in this format that are like auto concedes with Kiki at the moment. I feel like I feel like we're competitive into most things.
Yeah, I mean, the arena patch is definitely live. I'm going to finish my league, though. Got one, one match left. If we had two matches, I would have done the last one tomorrow, but... For the last two tomorrow, but with, uh, with just one match, we'll just play. Tron! Tron! Who plays Tron shit? I actually think our Tron matchup's not terrible, Famous Last Words. Famous, famous Last Words, I'm not convinced the Tron matchup's terrible. Actually, actually, we have this is our first time playing against Tron with this deck since, uh... Since we've been Kiki coordinating again. Yeah, we have a we have a collector of main deck. I get to like skyclave them off this map here. It's like pretty good. I also have a Magus of the Moon main. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should fetch basic forest there for Magus. Yeah, I totes I totes should have fetched basic four for Magus. Yeah, I think I think Oaf is technically better here. They could they could just like Natty Tron Karnas. But if they don't have Natty Tron. The Oaf is much better because it shuts off all their can tripping and stuff. It shuts off like Oblivion Stones and Tube. Yeah, perfect. You love to see it, chat. Am I going to do anything? I think any of the AFA arc cards are going to do anything in historic. Maybe Demi Lich, but no, a lot, a lot of them don't look historic playable. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So we attack for four and then can cord for witness. I think I think I just want to set up the combo kill here. So remember, Cord is a one, this is a, we are a one card combo deck if you have sufficient mana. And we have a lot of mana and creatures here. Can I get a witness? Take back Cord. Oh, it concedes. Okay, so what are we cutting? Endurance is not good. Omnath is not good. Prismatic Engine might actually not be good enough. Knight of Autumn's definitely in. And maybe it's just Endurance and Omnath out and we bring in Charma and Knight of Autumn. I think Eidolon is not good. Yeah, I guess that's true. So once upon a time, Eidolon was decent against their eggs. But we can get Collector Oath that's decent against their eggs now, right? We didn't, we didn't, back in my day, we didn't have a Stony Silence we could cord for. Well, yeah, but we need to cast a bunch of stuff, but I also have like a bunch of flash speed things. I think Solitude is fine. Um, occasionally they like cast Worm Coils. You want endings? I guess it kills map on one. That's fair. I'm trim the fourth solitude for an ending. 
I think I'd rather have Skyclave than the Fourth Solitude because tagging Oblivion Stone has a lot of value. This is fine. We'll bottom wall of omens. Yeah, some of these decks are current. The great creator decks too is a good call. Definitely name red here. We could just get Natty Trond and die. They don't have a second land. That's great. All right, sweet. Easy 4 1. Hashtag sometimes lucky. Uh, Kiki cards, great. Uh, I wouldn't change anything. Deck's awesome. Let's play some DD.